Hello, uh, my name is Sei Kang, Associate Professor of Entrepreneurship. I had an interview with the founder of Organic Farm at Auckland University. Dr. Faye Hansen is an Associate Professor of Biological Science. Her work involved fostering interdisciplinary and experiential approaches to 21st century learning using the campus student Organic Farm as a living laboratory. Let's watch her presentation together. I'm the director of a student organic farm, founder and director of the student organic farm, and you're looking at a view of our farm with a hoop house in the background. So I want to tell you about who we are. We're basically very committed people. Uh, consists of myself, I'm the farm director and the founder, and up until 2016, we had a farm manager, uh, partly paid by grants and OU. Um, that position was eliminated with budget cuts. And so I'm also the farm manager, which does uh, contribute to some of the problem I'm going to ask you to uh, consider working on. But we do have student farm managers. Currently, we have a farm manager and an assistant farm manager who are great. And then I, wherever COVID has affected us, I've put these images. So uh, we generally have a student crew, depending on how many hours they can work, two, three, or sometimes four people. Um, in addition to our farm managers, we support interns. We usually have a lot of volunteers. And then students in our classes are really part of the community who are very helpful to us. We have a student club that's very involved with us. And then, of course, our customers. So all of this this summer was very uh, definitely affected because the farm was shut down for the summer. We just had uh, that these two were allowed to be there and maintain the farm, but basically the farm was closed for the summer and that hurt us quite a bit. I wanted to, we were founded um, by a, a student club basically and myself, but we had a chance to develop an academic program as a result of this grant, which has shaped what we do. So I'll just mention it. Um, this grant was all about teaching and they had the idea that you could uh, teach science, technology, engineering, math using the theme of food as instead of our typical classes. And we've done that a lot. And one of the things that came out of this is that by working with the School of Architecture at Lawrence Tech, we came up with the concept of using the entire area for the theme of sustainability and creativity. It hasn't quite developed that way, but it is still on our sites to do. So basically, we do import, uh, provide important services. We provide education. We provide uh, routes toward health and wellness. Uh, we provide training and employment. And we uh, offer uh, sustainability uh, in, through our farm. And pr the first three were definitely impacted uh, by being shut down this summer and still currently uh, what is going on. Um, and But the upside was it did offer us a little bit more ability to pay attention to our sustainability practices because we actually, for the first part of the summer, couldn't grow any food. So we focused on that. Now we're growing food. So we have developed, as a result of that grant, several classes that we offer regularly, as well as a minor in urban ag and ag agroecology. Um, this was affected. The summer class didn't run which affected us badly because it's the underpinning of the farm. So didn't by it not running, it had quite serious ramifications for us, but we're recovering now because our fall and winter classes are, they're just labs, but they are running. So um, we have a different way of uh, learning here at the farm. It's hands-on learning and everybody that is involved in it is really um likes this um, hands-on learning approach to the farm. We have very few lectures. It's all learning through experience, experiential learning. Um, so we have more than 20 different classes have used the farm in some way beyond what I teach. Um, it's also we do research at the farm and other people can do research at the farm. Uh, we have some quite a few liaisons in the health and wellness community um, through the rec center and through the um, uh, uh, health sciences. We offer training 
and employment and uh, the training that people get is more than just how to farm. It's really a leadership training that our students get. And then uh, we provide uh, the actual uh, sustainability of the farm, but also education and knowledge about sustainability. We also uh, have a campus farm stand. That's a basic way that people know us. Um, a weekly farm stand for 10 weeks, which is our main source of revenue. It didn't run this summer. It's still not running. And so that is a huge uh, impact on us for a lot of reasons because of COVID. And overall, um, we have, um, we, it's been described, this is really a business term, so I don't know if I use it right, but um, it's been described by others as a boundary organization because we overlap with a lot of units on campus, but also with the community. And um, that has impacts for us in that everybody loves us, nobody knows what it's like to be us, nor is <laughs> Does anybody have us in their budget? <laughs> um, what do we need? Okay, we are self-funded. We do not get support from OU other than heat and light and water, okay, um, and my salary. Uh, but um, so our revenues from farm stand or other uh, sources are really key. Um, so, but they still don't cover our costs. Um, the farm stand uh, has for years been our main uh, revenue source. Then two years ago, we started something called a farm share where people subscribe to a weekly share of our produce. And this summer that was cut back because we weren't allowed to grow crops or anything for a while. We do have a small farm share now that's making us about 15 hundred dollars. Um, we had some on-campus sales lined up that I'll mention later that, that did not go. Um, we depend quite a lot on donations. We'll see how that goes. And then we depend on grants. And uh, this summer we were all, we were fairly certain there was one particular grant that we would get because we were invited to apply for it. And they had so many applications from farmers, like commercial farmers, who were disadvantaged by COVID that um, they decided to give the money to them instead. So we have a number of limiting factors for increasing our revenue. Um, there, there are opportunities there if we can solve those issues, but um, we're limited in space uh, in terms of what we can do and the actual facilities of that space. And we're limited in our storage ability to be able, to, if we grew more, where could we store it? Particularly the um, storage crops like potatoes and squash and things that we could extend the season on. Um, we also uh, built into farming is always the uncertainty of the weather and also pest issues that um, can impact different aspects of the farm. But I will say that weather uncertainty has gotten more uncertain in the last three years in particular. And uh, um, having a hoop house uh, really helps us to have the um, enclosure of uh, protection from the weather. Um, Staff limitations. Uh, when we lost our farm manager, I became the farm manager and what that means is uh, I spend less time being the director, being the person who's developing programs, who's writing grants, who's uh, doing a lot of things, okay? But I also don't have time to do the farm manager, right? Because I don't have time to do all the um, record keeping and that kind of thing. So uh, having lost that farm manager um, has been a real um, hit for us. And we're looking to find ways to get enough money to get a farm manager. Communication is an issue for us because uh, it's hard to publicize what we do. Um, that's just sort of built into OU. And, um, you know, there are restrictions on what we can do for signage. And also um, the uh, website, um, we, although we have student volunteers who can uh, develop social media and things like that, actual websites that we can use on OU and have changing information requires a staff member. And we don't have that ability to uh, move on a dime to share a lot of information. Um, 
this. The physical facility, there are quite a few limitations on that. Uh, for example, it has no, it's not an official qualified teaching uh, facility. It doesn't meet standards. Um, so there, uh, there are a number of issues there. And then uh, we have uh, relative to the average farmer out there who can make decisions just based on revenues. Uh, we also are saddled with quite a bit of red tape. So I want to throw out some ideas. Um, so I, I have a whole shopping list of ideas myself, but you might have more. Um, but the idea is I'm throwing out some problems and how we might get there to the point of increased revenues. Um, and I have sort of three themes, okay? We can uh, attack how we're farming and what we do. We can do something about our market, expand our markets possibly, which means we have to expand our farming. And then this, there's an idea about in, that's used in farming about, and maybe other parts of business, about using the farm for value added purposes. So with our farming, um, there are potential ways we could increase our efficiency. Um, when you are working with volunteers and non-trained students or you know learners, um, that's a little bit harder to do than when you are working with uh, an experienced crew that doesn't turn over every year or every semester. Um, and and there are some other things um, that uh, we might be able to find to just be more efficient. Um, season extension is a huge thing that would help us because of the uncertainties of outdoors. So having uh, additional hoop houses would help us as well as um, having one of one or more of them heated. That would be huge. Um, we could develop a system of high value crops. For example, uh, this is microgreens. Some people have a whole microgreens business. They're a, a high value crop. We don't currently have the um, place to do a lot more of that um, or some other things that we could do uh, maybe uh, specialize in high-end flowers uh, lots of things that are possible there and develop different markets and different marketing abilities um, and another um, limitation is our produce storage I mentioned before with our cool season uh, winter season crops, as well as our summer crops, having enough refrigerated storage space. If we had a root cellar, of which there is a very nice one at Meadowbrook, although this isn't yet, um, we could actually store a lot of produce that we could grow and sell it over in more extended season um, and market it. So that's uh, sort of, uh, we are, I would say, largely tapped out on farming unless we get season extension, but um, th there are adjustments we could make and I'd like to get a business uh, point of view on that. Uh, as far as marketing, I mentioned our current markets are farm stand, uh, which is 10 weeks starting in the middle of June. Uh, and I will say, I'll say it right here, farm stand is a huge amount of work. It's more of a PR effort. By the time we pay everybody, when we don't have volunteers, by the time we pay everybody and all the work it takes to get into this, um, we don't, we might break even. Um, so, um, you know, if we had to pay, pay everybody, which we do in the fall, the summer, we have enough volunteers and students. Uh, farm shares, we are starting a late farm share this fall. We may be able to increase those. Uh, we just recently um, set up a, a, a affiliation with the OU Pantry uh, to sell some produce to them at a discount. This, people will come to our farm to pick it up. Uh, we had a plan to work with Chartwells this summer. Um, that fell through because of COVID. Um, and we had a plan to sell to the health sciences uh, nutrition program, starting a cooking program. Mm -hmm. That also fell through because of COVID. Um, it's very possible with um, business thinking, some other markets could be developed too. Um, one innovative thing that we are doing this week, actually, on Friday, we're having the first and last uh, farm stand of the year, and it's going to be at the farm. We ended up with a lot of produce. That we, we had to grow crops to use for our fall classes. So we have a lot of produce. So we're having a big sale on campus, or I mean, 
at the farm. And so it will be an experiment. Uh, we actually, the site is very public um, on Adams. A lot of cars go by there. So um, we're experimenting on whether this would be a good market to actually hold a farm stand at the farm because it would certainly be a lot more work if we had the customers. I mean, it would be a lot less work, sorry. Um, and then um, the value added idea uh, I want to expand on because here's where I think we have the most potential um, because it doesn't depend on growing yet more produce, okay? Um, we can do things with the food we grow, food processing. Farmers do this like uh, using, you know, development jams or things like that. Um, innovative use of the site. Farms do this like, oh, maybe come and have your wedding at the farm or, or uh, have a dinner at the farm in various ways, uh, charge for having commercial photography at the farm. So there, there are different ways that we could use the site more innovatively and we have some ideas on that. Um, education, we think we could do much better at. So if we had the approval and facilities approved to do it, we could have continuing ed uh, programs and we could also have summer camps and we would really love to have summer camps these are some volunteer kids from detroit that came out but uh, we have occasionally worked with the um, um school of engineering stem summer stem camps but um we because we don't have uh a uh um all ability bathroom or even a very good bathroom it's hard to do much with the public so um we really would like to expand on this in a way that would be profitable with continuing ed and workshops and things like that um, the last idea that i have is expanding our programs beyond the food production and food distribution aspect of things and education. Um, I trained in horticultural therapy because I saw that the farm could be so valuable in that way. So I think there are ways, there's a lot of stress on campus and also needs for horticultural therapy as part of counseling. So um, I think there are ways that we might be able to generate some programs that generate additional funds for that. I, I need um, someone to help me uh, generate those plans and do some some predictions or budgeting on that. And then we also have had experience in working with the Center for Autism um, in developing a program, uh, a business for them, small business for them in microgreens and working with the Center for Autism in terms of uh, developing training programs, but other training programs in horticultural therapy uh, uh, field, uh, we would really be love to be involved in. We think there could be some funding there for that. So the key to any of this and anything that um, I envision and hopefully you all have some ideas and, and your marketing uh, savvy uh, will be greatly <laughs> appreciated on any one of these ideas that you land on. One, even one of thing that I've mentioned, but it really depends a lot on us being able to use more of the site we've been given. Okay. And so What's half of this building, this half of this building is used for facilities to store materials. Uh, these two buildings are used by Medbrook Theater to, to store props for the Christmas uh, uh, play. Only the Christmas play goes into these two. Um, and we feel they could have a better, uh, a nice pole building and we could use these buildings for things. They could develop for educational learning and workshops. And this one, uh, we could, we think we could change this into a licensed kitchen and use that for more um, uh, value added production. We think we were experimenting with having a farm stand here. Um, the other thing um, that to realize in looking at this, um, so the changes came. So we want to have everything we need to do has to fit in with OU's mission. And we feel that everything we does do does fit into OU's mission and vision. So one of the things um, is that because of our location right here, Adams Road gets 2,500 cars are used to before COVID, 2,500 
or more cars a day pass this site and there isn't a single sign along here that says anything about OU's education, much less that there's a farm here. This could be a really high impact, uh, high visibility example of our innovative learning plus all the programs we could have there. So. I'm interested in finding out what sort of a price marketing has for OU, actually. I don't know if that's what you guys are all about, but, but you know, what, what does this mean in terms of the value that we could bring to OU? Also, we high impact education is really what we do and everything that we would do for innovative uses would be about that. And we make a valuable contribution to the community and we can do much more that way with some of these value added programs that I've mentioned. I think that this is a great example of agricultural innovation. According to the history of innovation, the first innovation of the mankind was the agricultural innovation. Because of this, people were able to settle down without moving around for hunting animals. Although there was various innovation throughout the history, I believe that we will see the second wave of agricultural innovation in the near future. Unfortunately, there are still many people who are starving to die and living without drinkable water. I hope that agricultural innovation will be able to cut down the cost of ingredients and provide affordable food to all the people in the world. Although we are experiencing very difficult time due to the COVID-19, I hope that our small effort can make our community a better place. Well, thank you for watching this video. I wish all the best for your future.